ATS presents The Realty Debate, powered by Tata Capital, with Manisha Natarajan. With 300 days of sunshine, India is simply blessed when it comes to generating one of the cleanest sources of energy, that is solar power. No wonder the government has set up an ambitious target of generating 100 gigawatts of solar power by 2022. Where are we today on solar power? Not even 5% of that big ambitious dream. And we have only 7 years to get there. Can we and will we is the question we are asking in today's Realty Debate. Welcome everyone, I'm Anisha Natarajan and I'm joined by a panel which covers the entire gamut of solar energy in India and are some of the best experts to speak on this subject. Let me begin with Kanwar Sachdev, Managing Director, Sukam Power Systems. Also with me, Vinay Rustagi, Managing Director, Bridge to India Energy. Rahul Munjal, Managing Director, Hero Future Energies. Amit Kumar, Dean, Terry University. Sushant Arora, Head West India, Business Development of Clean Max Energy Solutions. Before I get to our panelists, let me just tell you what's been happening in solar so far. Exciting story, India gets 300 to 330 sunny days a year. So we could easily install 1000 gigawatt of solar generation, actually 10x of what the government has laid down as its target, which would then be equal to about four times the current peak power demand of the entire country. The peak power demand is currently about 250 gigawatts. And how much land would it take? Well, the figures vary. They vary between 0.5 to 1% of India's land could be taken up for this ambitious dream. Now, here's what's happened on the policy front so far. India launched the Jawaharlal Nehru's National Solar Mission in 2010 with the aim of adding 20 gigawatt of grid-connected solar power by 2022. And we will come to these terms like what is grid, what is not in the grid, etc., etc., important ones too understand. BJP-led government revised the target to 100 gigawatt. Imagine from 20, they took it to 100 by 2022. So they just, it became 5x. Now look at the current generation. I said 5% or less than 5%, but as of May 2015, which are the reported figures, the country is producing only 4.1 gigawatt of usable solar energy. That's 4% of the target. So not even 5%. All right, let me go back to my panelists and now find out whether that big solar dream is possible or not. Vineru Stagi, first question to you because you've done, your company's done the maximum number of white papers and, you know, you basically tell everybody how to get the solar story right. Is this a very ambitious target or not? Well, I, I won't say it's ambitious at all. I think India is a growing economy. It's one of the few bright spots in the world economy right now. If you look at our per capita consumption it's actually of energy, it's one of the lowest in the world. So we, we don't or, do not only have the growing environmental imperative, but we also need to meet our growing energy needs. And of course, India has one of the best radiation spots all, o all over the world. So I think solar makes fundamentally more sense in India than I would say anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this tar target is ambitious at all. Uh, of course, there are challenges in terms of implementation, including offtake, financing, land availability, etc. But I think those challenges, the government is absolutely committed to meeting them head on. Uh, and I think we, we do have a very, very committed and uh, reform-driven government uh, uh, who's looking after the sector. So I think we, the solar sector is in good hands uh, for the current administration. Okay. You talked about the policy makers and P Piyush Goyal tweeted, people had laughed when I said, and I'm, I, and I'm quoting him, solar energy prices will be below rupees 5 per unit. Last solar bid received by NTPC is rupees 4.63 per unit. That's a big catalyst for India to achieve its solar dream. Rahul Munjal, you agree with that? It's possible? 100 gigawatt is possible in seven years? So let's answer this in two or three different ways. Mm -hmm. The first is, of the 100 gigawatts, 60 gigs is coming from projects which are grid connected. Okay. For which you saw the 4.63 uh, winning bid by uh, one of our uh, leading companies in the country. And if you saw the number of players who were interested and who bid below 5 rupees, there were a few of them. So the reality is 
as far as the investments go, there is a lot of people and there is a lot of money chasing the sector. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk to me about investments, is there enough money to put, put this up? I think there is, as okay. far as the equity is concerned. Then you talk about the debt. Is there enough debt in the country to put this up? Now that is where question marks start to come in. Today, infrastructure debt by Indian government is close to 7 lakh crore. And the money needed only for renewables in the next seven years is also 7 lakh crores. So will our banks be able to fund the debt is one big question. So we, okay. need, to have a more, we need to have more depth when it comes to uh, the markets. Financing. Financing. Right. So that's one part. Equity is available, but is the debt available? And if it's not available in India, can it be got from uh, the rest of the world? Other than that, of course, we know what happened to the, uh, with the new land reforms and the land bill. Having said that, I think land is still easier got for solar than some other industries. So I don't see that as a problem. Third, which I might see as a slight problem is manpower. This industry has become very big very, very soon. So getting the right manpower to deliver 10, 12, 13 gigawatts in a year could be what is challenging. Mm -hmm. And you know, so 60 gigawatts in the next till 2022, easily doable. Of the 40 that we talk about rooftop, I think it's 20 rooftop and 20 entrepreneur uh, driven smaller, uh, uh, smaller wind farms, uh, sorry, solar farms. Okay. So 20 rooftop is also, I think, doable because if you see what the government is doing now, they are pushing it a lot. Mm -hmm. All the government buildings, including uh, and not limited to railways, uh, police, okay. MCDs, they're all moving solar. All so right. just that rooftop alone is 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 enough. Is enough. Yeah. Amit Kumar, do you agree that you know there's not only in solar uh, everything? I mean, the big challenge of land, like a lot of people say, where will the land come for for the large solar farms? Twenty five is what the government's laid out. Uh, will come for. Uh, do you think that that's not such a big challenge? The biggest challenge is actually financing and manpower. I think. Uh, uh, Manisha, all three would constitute big challenges and which comprises land. And land, when I say land, it's not only quantity of land, but acquisition of land. And of course, finance. Of course, Rahul says that uh, for equity, there is no problem. But he very rightly said that debt and at right price, the cost of capital for debt, I think that's an, that's an issue. And that's where one has to look very carefully how we are going to mobilize that kind of finance at that kind of cost, which would make solar uh, viable. And third, of course, is manpower, which unfortunately is not getting the kind of attention it should get. Because we are not only talking of manpower to set up these plants, but also to service these plants. Mm -hmm. So from where all that trained manpower at different levels is going to come, that is something one needs to very carefully look into. All right, okay. Sushant, uh, what do you think? I mean, you have been setting up solar energy plants. How do you service? I mean, what according to you is the biggest challenge? When it, is it financing, is it land, or is it manpower? Sure. Um, so, you know, if you look at these sort of 100 gigawatts, the number looks daunting. But I do agree with Vinay that if the right enablers are presented by the regulatory bodies as well as discoms, it's actually a fairly doable target. And these enablers, uh, once again, within the 60 gigawatts, which is your grid-connected or large-scale solar, the enablers are really a lot of this reverse bidding, et cetera, which uh, has been in the news recently where power at 4.63 and so on uh, rupees a unit is possible because land as well as uh, the infrastructure for evacuation has been supported well by the government and DISCOM in that area. Right. Uh, so in that sense, the enablers there really are um, government support for land, um, the right kind of policies, and auctions and reverse biddings, which actually help large-scale power developers sell their power. There's also a number of enablers to help private money at smaller ticket sizes really ramp up uh, and hit that 40 gigawatt target for uh, rooftop or on-site solar. Right. The accelerated depreciation policy is one of those. And mm -hmm. while it's relatively less spoken about in um, you know, in the media and news, but it's really within rooftop solar and within uh, people who want solar systems on a smaller scale on their factories, on their rooftops. That's really a key enabler. Uh, and that's, that's the kind of thing that uh, can make this target fairly doable, maybe even before 
before that 2022 timeline. So I think, from, I think the view we have is that solar is very, the future of solar is very bright in India. So long as these enablers, which have come into force over the last one, one and a half years, uh, actually stay on. All right. Kanwar uh, Sachdev, do you feel that there has been a bigger traction on the policy front in the last one, one and a, one and a half years with the new government coming to power? Have you actually seen the intention uh, matching that big vision? See, right now, they are, you know, the uh, everything is happening on the big projects only. If you see, they, this government is, uh, you know, reduce the uh, uh, subsidy. I thought Sushant said that the smaller private developers are having a better time. No, no, the, the point he's raised was that, uh, you know, there is a, uh, from the income tax point of view, yes. there is a depreciation benefit. Absolutely. Which, which is separate and the subsidy is a separate subject. Mm -hmm. And which is good. If we get away with the subsidy, that will improve our, you know, business. Okay. And government is going towards that. So government is trying their best to, you know, uh, uh, take this uh, in a very uh, right direction. But there are practical challenges. All right. Like, what are those challenges? Like if you want to do, uh, you know, rooftop. In rooftop, residential or commercial, you know, you have to do the grid, uh, grid connectivity and then you have to do the metering. Mm -hmm. So that is a big challenge right now. Governments are, state governments are struggling that how to implement that, uh, you know, metering subject. Because if you have to feed into the grid, it will be a big challenge. If you want to feed into the, your own personal grid, house or uh, commercial, it is easy. But when you are coming and feeding into the grid, that's a big challenge. And there, I think we need a, you know, and it's a state subject. All the, you know, um, uh, the discoms, they are struggling right now. So I think, you know, there are a lot of issues. But okay. I think uh, doing big projects will be very easy, which government is uh, taking on a very fast track. All right, so you're saying that bigger projects are easier to do and smaller projects are tougher to do. Vinay Rustaki, what's going on? I mean, I'm hearing a slightly different story from all the panelists. Great story, doable, but there are challenges. Some of the solar jargons, and maybe we can go through this. I mean, uh, we just heard uh, Mr. Kanwar Sachdev mention the grid versus off-grid. What is it? I mean, how does this whole thing work? I understand that you have to, whatever solar you generate, you must try and connect at least 60% of it, as uh, Mr. Rahul Munjal mentioned, to your national grid through which it's distributed. How would solar work in the grid and non-grid formats? See, one of the big advantages of solar is that this is a very, very modular technology. So what that means is that the government has an option to either set up big ground-mounted projects which can be connected to the transmission grid and the power can be wheeled on to the end consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, alternately, what the government can also do, or including the private developers, they can set up locally available rooftop and other projects which are directly connected to the consumer load without okay. the power being carried on to the transmission grid. And that has a huge advantage because, you know, because these projects are not connected to the grid, there is no extra transmission or distribution cost. And as we all know, India loses about 25% of its power in the transmission grid. Right. So producing power at the local point of consumption using the off-grid model actually has a huge financial and operational benefits. So that's what we're really talking about, grid-connected versus off-grid projects. But I think on the grid-connected, while I agree with most of the panelists that uh, many of these challenges are easily uh, meetable, I think one thing that we haven't talked about is how do you integrate the 60 gigawatts of grid-connected power uh, into the transmission system. Right. And by, by that, what I mean is uh, solar power, of course, we need to remember is intermittent power. Uh, you produce 60 gigawatts of solar power when the sun is shining, mm -hmm. whether the load or consumption is there or not. Uh, equally, uh, when the consumption is there, when the consumers do need that power, for all you know, the sun may not be available to the extent that is required. So, so you need flexibility in your consumption as well as generation point of view, which means that your grid, transmission grid needs to be uh, very uh, robust to deal with this intermittent source of power. You also need very smart management of the grid, which means very accurate, predictable uh, forecasting of both the, the power consumption as well as power generation to be able to me meet the intermittency of the power generation as well right. as the intermittency of the power consumption. Mm -hmm. Rahul Munjal, therein lies the problem, doesn't it? I mean, where, how do you enable our transmission system and our grid to actually yeah. bring on solar onto the grid? Yeah, yeah. So, you According know, to me, that remains the biggest bottleneck today. It's yeah. not financing, it's not yeah. land. Yeah. It is just this point. Yeah. 
you know unfortunately the grid map of india and the uh, and the resource solar resource mm -hmm. map of india they don't gel yes. they're completely different absolutely so there is no doubt but this is not an india problem this is a problem with the grid even in the west Agree. and of course it is intermittent and we need solutions wherein we have but isn't that precisely why the west also believes that the off grid model is the best you know so for india it's such a big country and the consumption and the requirement is so large you mm -hmm. need everything okay. you do need off grid you need off grid uh, in 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 homes you need off grid in remote areas where the grid cannot reach so there are two different uh, off grid uh, solutions there and both have to be serviced both gaps have to be met both have to be you know our, our prime minister said 24 by 7 electricity for all uh very very soon you know i think it's next year or the year after that mm -hmm. so if we want to get there and we want to uh, electrify 300 million more households how are we going to do it there is no one solution fit all there is a solution which has off grid uh grid connected other renewables as well as coal unfortunately we still have to do more of coal you know the reality is we we will need 540 gigawatts of power in the coming times you know it could be 5 years from now 3 years from now maybe 10 years from now i'm not really sure how fast the country will develop mm -hmm. but if it does develop as as fast as we want it to develop within 5 years we'll have to double double our capacity so in that case we will need all these solutions according to me if you have a roof today and you are not producing solar electricity it is an opportunity lost it's almost you know you're a property lady you're a property show so it's almost having it's like having an apartment for rent and not renting it out Uh -huh. that is your rooftop solar today so if you have a roof you need to generate revenue from it because it is easily doable okay we are going to come back and focus on just that that big point that rahul munjal has raised that if you have a roof you have sunshine as a citizen as a resident as a homeowner what should you do to utilize this asset and make sure that you also are part of that big solar story of india stay with us we'll be back in just a moment